Welcome to the Top 10 Auto Show. Each week we bring you the Motors team's top 10 in an area of the car world. This week we're going to get Dan Wright muddy. Why, you haven't been drinking the old falling down water again, have you? No, we're off-roading with the top 10 4x4s, the kings of the mud cluggers. Commonly sighted doing the school run and traversing those mountainous curbstones on the high street. Behave yourself and get on with it. Sneaking into our top 10 is one of those small Japanese 4x4s that filled the gap when the Land Rovers and Jeeps of the world went seriously upmarket. The Gran Vitara is the latest in a line of successful small off-roaders from the Japanese manufacturer. The old Vitara was as popular with farmers as the townies, but the Grand Vitara is bordering on too posh to carry a muddy sheep in the back with a bale of hay. And it's a little light for towing Jemima's horse to the dressage event. For that, we need something a little bigger. So in at number nine is the Vauxhall Frontera. Hold on, I'll just get my tool kit. Uh, yes. The Frontera has not been blessed with a great reliability record in the original versions. But this new one has been a better bet. Watch out, the producer's just put on his anorak. Where does he get that stuff? In the pub quiz at the Dog and Duck. Frontera may have been the product of a GM Group joint venture, but the chunky looks lifted above the majority of bland 4x4s. But it stays low in our top 10 due to the early owner's familiarity with the rescue services. A quick demonstration for you to show you how good the four-wheel drive is on the slippery surface. This first corner is in four-wheel mode, no problems. This second one is just rear-wheel drive. The last set, the better. On the inside, it feels substantial and well put together, though not exactly interesting, it has to be said. The dash particularly is stupendously bland. Functional, no doubt, well laid out, no doubt, and probably not that rattling, but bland, definitely. I don't like the way this rear wheel vibrates when you shut the door, though. If sales alone counted for anything here, then our number eight would be much higher up the chart. The Ford Explorer may not be well known over here, but in the States, it's run away with a top sales slot for year after year. Unfortunately, it's also the subject of a huge number of lawsuits across the pond due to tyres shredding their treads and leaving the car on its roof. The Empire State Building, the Grand Canyon, Bill Clinton Sex Drive and the Ford Explorer. What's the connection? Well, they're all massive. This thing is so big you almost want to fit atmospheric lighting, put a laminate floor in and maybe a patio in the back for when it's hot. Hmm, despite all the bad publicity, the Explorer is a fine off-roader, which manages to flow quite nicely on-road as well.
Whilst the huge fuel bills on this car might be a disappointment, the huge amount of luggage space and legroom isn't. For this, I've got a simple experiment with the lowly tennis ball. Now bear with me here. This is very clever. This really is quite impressive. It's actually one of the longest vehicles in its class. And here we go. Hey, that's how big it is. At number seven is one of the school run favorites, the Mitsubishi Shogun. Originally, it was a good attempt to muscle in on the original Range Rover. But as the Range Rover climbed to the heady heights of the King's Road and became obscenely posh, the Shogun went to war with the Discovery. Very steep slopes, admittedly, but it's very dry and uh, the Shogun has absolutely no difficulty coping with the track they've laid out for us. How good it would be towing a horse box out of a muddy field or a substantial boat up a slimy slipway remains to be seen. Every evolution has seen improvements, but the Shogun has always been more biased to on-road than off-road excellence. Which is why it struggles to climb higher in our chart. You're more likely to see a Shogun doing the caravan convoy run on the M5 than in the mountains. Of course, the whole image of 4x4s has changed fundamentally since the days the farmers would put the pigs in the back of the Land Rover to take them to market. Today, very few of these vehicles go seriously off-road, and even fewer of them work hard for their living. on a minute. Why are people really buying these 4x4s if they're not playing in the rough stuff then? And on to our top six. From the same stable as the icon that started the 4x4 revolution comes the Jeep Cherokee. About as American as hamburgers, but surprisingly free of the usual flab you'd associate with cars across the pond. Now this ain't no namby-pamby soft roader. This is actually a very capable all-terrain vehicle. Oh yes sir, eh? And if its rugged good looks aren't enough to convince you of that, then a quick glance down the spec sheet will do. Of all our mud pluggers, this is one of the most fun on the road. The 4-litre straight 6 engine gives it lots of zest. The engine. 4.7 litre V8. It'll go from 0 to 60 miles an hour in around 8 seconds. That's madness! On the downside, the Yanks haven't quite caught up with the more sophisticated plastics and switchgear of their European competitors. You sit inside your Cherokee and it doesn't seem to have the same sense of occasion. Kuch and you were harping on about the school run. This is an honest workhorse, which can still mix it in the rough as well as being sprightly on a run. But it still languishes in the bottom half of our chart. Into our top five, 
and landing with all the grace of a 20-stone ballerina, we have the Toyota Land Cruiser. It may not lead the charts in the UK, but over in Africa, the Land Cruiser is valued for its rugged reliability. Whilst down under, they wouldn't give a 4X for a Land Rover in favour of the Oriental workhorse. Out in the desert, reliability is a lifesaver, while on the school run, the Toyota doesn't have quite the cachet of a Range Rover. It is also quite big, which makes it slightly less manoeuvrable than a block of flats. Mm, very funny. Everyone who makes these sort of cars will admit to you that 90% of them never even get their tyres muddy, let alone go seriously off-road. If the tyres do get muddy, it's usually from the car park at Ascot or Twickenham. But if you paid £40,000 for an off-road vehicle, owners demand, even if they're never going to do this sort of thing, that the vehicle really must perform. After the break, we dive into our top four and look at the 4x4s that didn't make the top ten. In at four, we have the Land Rover Discovery. The latest version packing, HDC, active anti-roll, foldable seats in the boot. Surely all those gizmos are taking away the point of the rugged 4x4. Well, they mean that your Land Rover will get you absolutely anywhere with the minimum effort. how high the driver's position is. Land Rover call this the command position, presumably because you get a commanding view. At high speed, it's very stable, and gone is the lurching and swaying that used to put so many people off. It's now a very sophisticated road car. Now comes ACE, Active Cornering Enhancement. There's an electronically controlled hydraulic ram at each corner, and that works to keep new discovery on a level plane through the bends. Hurrah! But what about the cars that didn't make our top ten? The Nissan Patrol is another favoured in desert climbs, but doesn't quite have that kudos here. Or what about the huge American Hummer, complete with a diesel V8? Made famous by the US Army in the Gulf War. They'd really struggle if they had to chase anyone up a British single-track lane.
Then there's the little Suzuki Jimny. Quite cute and not too bad in the rough stuff, but a little too toy-like to compete with the rest of the bruisers. So into our top three. Our next contender brought posh spice to the muddy brigade. The original Range Rover created a whole new type of 4x4, which was as comfortable to drive on as it was off-road. They gradually got plusher and plusher, until you had more leather than a handbag shop. The latest version got bigger too, gaining air suspension and gizmos galore. Of course, the budding industrialists who crave them see the Range Rover more as a rival to the Mercedes S-Class. But it doesn't quite make it into our top two. The Amsterdam Motor Show, the 30th of April, 1948. Innovation takes the world stage. We can thank farmers for our number two, the Land Rover Defender. Evolution has seen the Defender become probably the best of our ten off-road. It is a classic in every sense of the word though, and you won't see any of the Knightsbridge lot posing around in this one. It has, however, gone up in price, so it's no longer the budget workhorse that it once was. Before naming our number one, a quick rundown of our chart. At 10, we had Suzuki's Grand Vitara. Anything but grand. It's still okay in the mud. Number nine is the Vauxhall Frontera, although the earlier versions would see more of the frontier of the local garage. Number eight is the tire shredding top seller from Ford, the Explorer. Seven is the Mitsubishi that isn't quite posh enough, the Shogun. Next up, a piece of real American pie. Our number six is the Jeep Cherokee. Edging ahead at five is the Toyota Land Cruiser, the king of the desert. Number four is the Discovery, favorite for the school run. Number three is the poshest of them all, the Range Rover. While winging in at number two is the rugged Land Rover Defender. The car that started the whole thing off. The original Willis Jeep. And its latest evolution, the Wrangler. Just like the Land Rover Defender, the Jeep Wrangler is bigger and heavier than the lightweight wartime original, but it's lost little of its charm or ability. I've driven the Wrangler in mountains, across snow, across rivers, but if anyone had actually said I was going to drive it, on sand dunes in the middle of the channel, I'd have told them, frankly, they were absolutely barking mad. 
they still have huge Jeep Jamborees stateside where they put their favourite 4x4 through its paces. While the name Jeep is synonymous with off-roading the world over. Most come with a 4-litre straight-six engine and a choice of removable hard or soft top. The suspension may not have the articulation of the Defender, but it can certainly hold its own in the mud. Overall points go for history, reputation and style. The Jeep easily holding its own, but as the car that inspires all the others, it easily comes out on top.